What is going on guys, King Builds here. So in today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to do your maintenance on a Suzuki 150 motor. Um, I believe the 100 hour maintenance and the 200 hour is just about the same. So let's do it. Give you a quick rundown. I got the maintenance kit itself and inside of here, you got your water pump, all the uh, pieces around it. You got spark plugs, oil filter, fuel filter, a bunch of little O-rings and stuff. And these are your anodes. Um, and then you just gotta buy gear oil, engine oil, and marine grease, ideally. Okay, so to start off, you're gonna wanna take your cover off, and if you are near water, you could run the engine for a couple minutes before you do the oil change. But in this case, I'm just gonna be changing it. So down here, you got your oil drain plug. So you'll put an Allen key in there, and we're gonna drain that out first. All right, to start off, make sure you have yourself a bucket ready to go. And now there is a washer on there, so make sure you catch that or not. <laughs> Okay, oil is draining and it is almost there. If the oil is slowing down, it's not going too quick, you can crack open your oil cap here and that should help it flow a little bit quicker. Okay, so once the oil is done draining, we are going to be taking out this oil filter here. So to get that out, you could try and get it out with how it is, but the best way to do it is to take off this side cover. So you got a couple screws, screw there, screw there, screw down here. Looks like there is supposed to be a screw down there, but it's missing. And then you got a screw up here and looks like a screw down there. So we're gonna take off this panel so we can access the fuel filter. Now this cover, you might seem like it's gonna break, but it's really, it just has a good seal on there, a rubber seal. Just make sure that you got all your screws out properly. And there we go, that exposes your oil filter, so that's gonna make it much easier to get out. Now you definitely don't wanna use channel locks when you put it back on. Okay, now you're gonna get your Suzuki oil filter. This is the number right on there. This is for a Suzuki 150 outboard, I believe it's a 2023. Make sure you take off the plastic. Get a little bit of oil off the old filter, put it on your finger and get some oil on this new seal on the new filter. And then you just stick this on there. Make sure you get it lined up straight, otherwise it won't go on. Once you get a hand tight, you can get a tool that you use to remove filters. Just remember, it's probably best to get one that is a band because you can't use one with teeth or channel locks because you could puncture a hole in here and that will lead to just a big mess. So you want to put on your tool and then you just want to turn this and just get it snug. You don't need a heat on it. There we go. Okay, now the bulk, it's got this washer on here. So you can take that off. And if you did buy a whole kit, uh, it should come with a new one. Put that on there. And now we will reinstall it. Okay, so now we got the plug back in and the oil filter. If you look on top of your engine, it will tell you what kind of oil you should use. And also the capacity for the oil right there. Once you think you have enough oil in there, you can go ahead and grab your dipstick, pull it out, wipe it off, stick it back in, and it should be right just below the top dot on the dipstick. Okay, so now how to clear the codes on your computer. You turn the key on. You can see right there it says change oil. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull out the safety wristband here put it back in pull it out i don't remember how many times you gotta do it but it's a couple times and then leave it in there shut the key off turn it back on and there you go it is cleared okay there you go engine oil is done now we come down here and we got to change out the gear oil so there's a plug right here that is your oil level there's another plug up there. We don't need to touch that one. And then there is one right here underneath. So we're gonna take this bottom one off. I got a small bucket here, put that underneath and we'll take out that bottom screw. Okay, so to get this bottom screw out, you wanna get a good size flat screwdriver. And you might wanna also get a wrench you can put onto your screwdriver to help twist it out. There we go. Now this bottom plug here has a small magnet on it. And I will show you how much metal shavings you have. Now what you gotta do is open up this top one. That way it starts flowing out of the bottom better. 
And there we go. Now it starts to come out. Now here is the plug from the top hole. It does not have a magnet on top, so that is how you can tell the difference. Bottom one has a magnet, top one does not. If you did get a Suzuki maintenance kit, it should come with two new um, washers. This is the bottom plug. It's got a washer on it. And here's the top plug. It also has a washer. To get these washers off, you could hold it with some pliers, use a screwdriver, and then just spin the screw out. And then for the washer, it doesn't matter which way you put it on. Just set it on there, get your screwdriver, and spin it back on. While the last little bit of gear oil is coming out, right up here, this is your fuel filter. So what you got to do is unplug this blue clip here. You just got to push down the tab in the center on top and pull it out. I'm going to need two hands for that. And then this is your filter. You just spin it counterclockwise. It unscrews, and I'll show you the filter on the inside. And to take this fuel filter out, you could use some uh, channel locks. Just be gentle because it is made out of plastic, the outside. There we go. This right here is the number for the fuel filter. Now you just can spin it off. Now it does. it is right full of fuels. You might spill some. Now if this is dirty, you can dump it out. And this right here is our fuel filter. Pop that out. Here's the new one. You just stick it in there, right in the center and It'll pop in just like that. You'll hear a little pop. Now we can grab the little cup, put it back on, and tighten it up. Now this filter housing does not have to be super tight. You can just put it on by hand and give it a good twist. Once you get that on, you get the blue clip, and you put it back together just like that. Once you got that on, you can go ahead and put the cover back on. Now you might be able to get this off without taking the side cover off, um, but I took it off anyways because I changed the oil filter, the oil, and I'm doing the gear oil now. So it's pretty much come down to a drip so you can get your plug. This is the one with the magnet on it. You can just stick it back in there. It's got the new seal on it already. Get it started and you can get your screwdriver. And this one, you don't have to use a wrench to put it back on. Just tighten it by hand. Get it nice and snug with the screwdriver. From the tutorials that I watched on changing the gear oil, two of the people I watched had a pump and they'd actually pump it up until it would overflow out of here. I don't have a pump. So what I'm going to do is just dump the oil through this top port here. And you keep filling it until it doesn't take any more, basically is what you gotta do. I got the gear oil that comes in a little can like this. It's got a little point on the end. So I can go ahead and just stick that in there and fill it up. Now you gotta make sure you do this not too quick because it will overflow. And it'll start to dump out. And also what you can do is once it is full, if you spin your prop a couple times, that will sometimes make a little bit more room. Okay, there we go. It is full. So now I can grab the top cap and screw it back on and it's got the new washer on it okay good now the gear oil is changed so the next thing to do on this motor is actually replace the water pump and to do that we have to remove this entire lower unit here so we got a bunch of bolts around the perimeter i believe there's six one two three here three on the other side and then we have to take off this little fin here there's one bolt here and then inside of there there's going to be another one For this middle bolt, I'm just going to take it down about a quarter inch and do the same on the other side, but then, then take the rest out. That way, when it drops down, it doesn't completely fall all the way off. So before you take off this little fin here, you might want to make a line with a white Sharpie so you can remember what angle it was at. So when you put it back together, it goes back the way you took it off. All right, once you get the fin off up in here, there is a bolt that you need to take out. That is really tight on there, so I'm gonna use a wrench, put it on the end of the ratchet. I need a bigger wrench. There we go. That right there is the reason it was so tight. It had some thread locker on there. All right, same thing on this side. I'm going to leave the middle one in there. Just drop it down about a quarter inch. There we go. Okay, so I just realized the camera wasn't recording, but um, the bolt right here, the last one, I took that out. This whole thing drops down. And then now to get it out completely, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Now that it's down, what you're gonna do is lift up the lower end and then tilt your motor up and then pull it out. Oh, there we go. Now, it would be easier if you had two people to do this. 
there we go now this little clip right here was on the shaft so you just want to stick that back up in there so our water pump is right inside this box so we got one two three four bolts to remove so we're going to remove those and then i'll show you how to open this up so these are not going to be super tight so make sure when you put it back on that you don't crank them on there and just make them snug okay so now you can just grab this and it should just start to wiggle off there we go and this you can just slide off all the way now if you do buy the maintenance kit this is what the package looks like and inside i'll show you what we got so right here we got the new water pump impeller that right there's the old one here's a new one we got a gasket and inside of here we got a little key this right here is for the impeller so make sure you keep track of this little part i'm going to put it back into the bag you got a gasket right here to seal it back up and then you got a new metal plate there we go so this is part of the main reason why you do not run these motors when they're not in the water uh, because this water pump is always spinning and it's just going to be rubbing on metal and it will melt this rubber. So you got to make sure that your motor is always hooked up to water when you're running it. Okay, so to get this impeller off, I'm just going to get a screwdriver underneath it. You might just have to work at it a little bit. You can rotate the shaft to the opposite side. Give it a little push. One more thing is keep a mental note of the direction of rotation. So you can see it is rotating that way. You have to remember that for when we put the cover back on. And then number two, also remember which way you took it off because one side has a key exposed. The keyway is not exposed on this side, but just so you know, the keyway goes on like that. Okay, so I just put a little bit of gear oil on the shaft here to make it slippery. All right, now once you get it off part way, it should come off easy the rest of the way. Okay, there we go. Here's the old one. Now, if you are doing this with the lower unit standing up, make sure that this little key right here does not fall into any of the compartments of this lower unit. This right here is the old one. I'm going to take it out because the kit comes with a brand new one. Use a screwdriver just to pop that out. There it is. And now this plate will come off. Just use a screwdriver and gently pop it off. So you can see the gaskets on the bottom. We got a new one right here and a new plate. Here's a new gasket. And it's got these little stubs here which help guide everything on and make sure they go straight so you can use those and here's the plate it goes on just like that and now before we put the impeller back on i'm gonna get a little bit of grease and just put some grease around here grease the shaft and then also make sure we install the new keyway right in there so you can look around here see where it is line it up but you got to make sure that this key actually stays down keeps wanting to pop up okay there we go it is on all right so now for the second step this is the cover that goes over the impeller. We gotta take out this metal piece right here. So to do that, you can flip it over, set the screwdriver right down on the edge of the metal, right there. Give it a few taps, go on the other side. And there we go. Got it out. Over time, when sand gets in here, it makes these swirl marks and this gets chewed down a little bit. So we're gonna replace it. it comes with the maintenance kit. What you can do is clean out any debris in here this one's pretty clean. Get the new one, get some grease, grease it up. Now, before you put that greasy part in here, make sure that you install the gasket. The gasket drops in here. Now, make sure when you put this in that it is straight because once you start pushing it in there, it's going to be hard to make it twist. So make sure that you line it up. So this little groove where it comes down is in this part right here. And then it just slides in nice and easy like that. You can grease this up. Okay, now we're going to put the cover back onto the impeller. So we are going to slide it onto the shaft. And now the impeller won't seem to fit in right away. So what you got to do is grab onto this shaft right here with your hand. And you're going to rotate it the direction that it's supposed to spin, which is typically clockwise. Do that. And then this will slide right over top there we go and now we can go ahead and put the four bolts back in just make sure when you put these in that they are not cranked super tight but just snug and while you're here it doesn't hurt to put some grease on some of these shifting parts and then any corrosion you see around these little studs here there's one here and one on the top right corner you can get off that corrosion so now i'm going to get the lower unit and put it back up inside the engine and put the bolts back on. Okay, so to put this back in, it's gonna be the same thing that you do when you took it out. Basically, uh, just in reverse. All right, so again, it'd be good if you had two people, you might be able to manage by yourself. Push this back up in where it goes, and then lower the motor. You might have to rotate the shaft with your hand a little bit, so that way the splines line up. 
Okay, so it's the next morning and I finished putting the bottom end together. It basically goes together the same way you took it apart, you just put it back up. And now for the anodes and the spark plugs, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so for your spark plugs, uh, you got all these clips on here. You just push down right here and they pop off. Then you take out that bolt right there and this will pull out and that will expose your spark plug. And then this just pulls right out of there. There we go. And that is your spark plug right down in there. Now all this stuff goes back together the same way you took it apart. So you just get this. I like to put a little bit of dielectric grease in the end there. You stick it in, pop it in place, get your bolt, put it back in and just snug. And then you get your clip and pop it back on there. Just like that. Now for the anodes, super simple. You literally just take out that one bolt. This will pop off and the anodes on the inside. You basically got one here, two, three, four, five, and they even hide one underneath here. Now I'm not gonna take them all out because you can see uh, this boat's usually run in fresh water, so you can see this one's not really corroded. Now, if you're in salt water, you're gonna want to replace all these. Even if you're in fresh water, uh, just take a look at them and see what they look like. I'm just gonna show you here. Just put your ratchet on. Take the bolt out. Basically, you just gotta pull it straight out. There we go. So this one's not so bad. You could actually clean this up with a wire brush. There's a bunch of gunk on there. Now, while you're at it, you can flush all this out. You can actually put on your water muffs, which I don't have any out here right now, but you can put them on there, open up all your anode ports, and the water will come up and flush it out. So as it's doing that, you can clean it out and it'll flush everything out. And then you can put the bottom one in and work your way up till the water comes out of the top one. All right, so this anode right here, you can see is not so bad. It's still got its original shape. If you run a lot in salt water, you'll notice that this won't look like this. It'll be all chewed up and indented and it will be mostly gone so this one's fine i'm going to put it leave it in there because this boat just runs in fresh water make sure you put it in nice and straight so that o-ring seats in there and then you get your bolt and you just put it back in okay so that wraps up for the 100 hour or 200 hour maintenance depending on your engine and what you have to replace that should cover most of it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one